What's up guys, Jade's Corner back here again for yet another Teen Wolf video. And today is gonna be the first in a series of videos I have teen, called Teen Wolf Debunks, which is gonna be me going around debunking a whole bunch of bad articles on Teen Wolf. If you're familiar with YouTube channels, um, primarily in, rela in relation to anime, like Geekdom 101, Swag Kage, Naruto Explained, you know that they always debunk and destroy these stupid articles, these trash, 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 trash articles that Screen Ramp puts out on these other websites about Dragon Ball, Naruto, all those other animes that I, I and probably you like to watch. So today we're gonna check out an article called Teen Wolf's Alphas Ranked which was released by Screen Rant on August 8th, 2019 by a female who goes by the name Madison Lennon. All right, so I already read this article last night in the car because I was coming back from New York City from doing stuff over there. And uh, yeah, let's just say my reaction was, um, uh, I, I was pretty fucking upset when I saw this because I was like, this is a terrible list, who the hell? would agree with any of this crap so yeah screen rant you're gonna get the wrath of the teen wolf community and especially me in this video so uh sit back relax and let's just get into it so the article starts off by saying alphas are leaders of the werewolf pack on teen wolf the tv drama which aired for six se six seasons we rank these powerful and fascinating characters oh by the way when we get to the top three, you might laugh your ass off. So let's just get started. Number 10, this chick had Enos. Now, this is probably one of the only placements I agree with on this list because Enos in season three, part one, we didn't really get to see a lot of his power. Um, and a lot of people, when it comes to Enos, like to uh, go back and forth with, who, with who's stronger um either him or alpha derek a lot of people seem to forget that in tack 2 the episode enos was caught off guard by derek he didn't know derek was there and all derek did was really just like pick up enos and throw him out the elevator so i don't so that's not really considered a fight or really anything at all to literally just derek catching enos off guard and throwing him out the elevator and that's it a lot of people use that scene to be like, oh, Derek's stronger than Enos. I'm like, how is Derek stronger than Enos if he didn't get a chance to fight? Literally makes no sense, right? So the main fight besides that, that people usually gauge Enos's power off of is in the episode Frayed when Derek is fighting Enos and they fall off and they both supposedly die on that elevator on that, uh, no, fuck, what's it called? Excavator, right? So... People will always go back and say that, um, you know, that Derek had the upper hand in that fight. But if you actually look closely towards the end of the fight, Enos had more of the upper hand and was actually about to, you know, throw Derek off anyway, even though they both ended up falling off. But Enos did have the upper hand for a lot of that fight, even though Derek did put up a pretty good fight against him too. So I always kind of saw that as, oh, Enos is stronger than Derek. But, you know, that's another conversation for another day. Cause I might remake the top uh, strongest alphas video. I feel like some placements in there I should have gave to other characters. But um, yeah, this is a good placement on the list. I had no problem with this. This is where I start to have a problem. At number nine, she put Ethan and Aiden. Now, Ethan and Aiden individually are probably the weakest of the alpha pack. No, I take that back. Enos is the weakest of the alpha pack. They're the second weakest. Now, when it comes to their merged form, they're the strongest of the alpha pack besides Deucalion, hands down. I mean, their merge form could go back and forth with Kali for who's the second strongest, but there's a lot of scenes within season three, part one to kind of hint at their merge form being stronger than Kali. Um, I mean, shit, they put up a better fight <laughs> against 
uh, what you call it, uh, Jennifer for like five seconds more than Kali did. Kali got absolutely wrecked. But I mean, if you're counting, if she if she's talking about them individually, I still wouldn't put them this far down on the list. But if she's talking about them in terms of like their merged form, they need to be at least top five, hands down top five. But this is an OK list uh, list uh, ranking for um, Ethan and Aiden spot. And she talks about them being killed by the Oni too, which is stupid because they were Omegas and they lost their alpha status when that happened. So they weren't as strong as they were in season three, part one. They just had the skill of them being alphas. They lost all the power. So, I mean, like you're talking about alphas, but you have Ethan and Aiden when they were Omegas being killed by the Oni on the list. So are you, gonna, are you talking about them as Omegas or are you talking about them as Alphas? You can't include their deaths because that happened when they were Omegas. So, I mean, and I mean, look at here. She talks about the fact that they can merge into one monster wolf form, but you still have them this low on the list. Like I, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. This is another spot I had a problem with. Kali at number eight. Why, bro? Like, bro, why? Dog. Does she remember anything about Kali and her strength from season three, part one at all? Like, dude. Kali was a freaking monster. She had, <laughs> bro, when I was in the car, I was freaking out, bro. Like I, I didn't make too much noise because my parents were driving. I didn't want to distract them, but like dog, I'm telling you, when you see who's in the top three, you're going to be like, what the, f bro. Kali destroyed Derek in every fight they had. Mind you, this is when Derek was an alpha. Kali was bitching both Ethan and Aiden every time she was on screen with the both of them and had them doing her bidding pretty much and it's shown and implied that she's the second strongest besides Deucalion and has the most skill besides him in terms of being able to fight and hold her own and have all this power I mean dog come on bro like Let's just get on to the next spot. She had. Oh. I know you saw the name, bro. She put Deucalion at number seven. This is when I this is when I lost it when I read the article. She put Deucalion at number seven. Now, this is the dumbest placement on this list. Do you want to know why? Because it's it's shown in every season Deucalion that he's in that he's the strongest alpha in the entire show I don't I don't understand why he's placed this low like nobody agrees with this why would you do that like dog Deucalion has his demon wolf form who was able to bitch Scott without even having any issues completely annihilate Derek mind you this is Derek when he's no longer an alpha but still nonetheless he annihilated Derek was able to pretty much beat the crap out of the Jennifer Blake who was powerful enough at the time to be able to kill both Ethan and Aiden's merged form and Kali at the same time. The only creature we've seen who is able to surpass Deucalion in terms of power on the show is the Dorak at her full power during the lunar eclipse. Oh, and mind you, she needed to sacrifice 12 people and rely on a lunar eclipse in order to take out Deucalion because he was so goddamn strong. 
let that sink in. And she needed to transform into her final form permanently for those 15 minutes in order to well wall out on Deucalion 2. And the beast is the only other creature that is stronger than Deucalion because the beast is just absolutely insane. Some of the stuff it pulls off in the show is out of this world is ridiculous. So yeah, Deucalion being number seven is stupid. I hate this placement. It's retarded. Everybody knows Deucalion is the strongest alpha in the show. I mean, you can ch interchange between either him or Scott, but I personally, after watching Team Wolf so many times over at this point, I put Deucalion at number one and Scott at number two. So yeah, um, terrible placement. Then she has Miss Finch. <laughs> oh my god hold on let me check some all right it's still going i had to make sure we're still screen recording but she has miss finch at number six guys an alpha who we've never even seen fight once in the show an alpha who we've seen actually bitch and be scared of confrontation when she's supposed to be leader of an entire pack a wild alpha to mind you because in season six part two they mentioned that the primal pack is completely wild got rid of their human sides so they're supposed to use all their werewolf strength and be one of the strongest packs in the whole show but when we see miss finch she's a bitch she doesn't do anything she can't fight she runs away and yet she's an alpha but you put her above deucalion yeah, okay, bro. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's see what she has to say. Miss Finch, Miss Finch was introduced in season five, but no one knew about her alpha status until the sixth season of the series. The only re the reason why nobody knew about her alpha status is because they retconned it into the show. Um, it was an out of nowhere decision to make her an alpha. When she was first introduced, she there was no intention of her being of any importance besides being another female version of mr harris from the first three seasons so yeah uh she proved to be a great help with the pack in the fifth season as they were learning about the chimeras um she didn't directly help the pack with learning about chimeras that was indirect help because she didn't even know about any of the chimera stuff going around at the time i don't think she was aware so yeah um another fact you got wrong there Little is known about how Miss Finch became a werewolf, whether she was bitten or turned, I'll give you that. We also don't know how she inherited her alpha werewolf status, I'll give you that too. But she did become a high school biology teacher and has also has a daughter. What does that have to do with the strength of her alpha status or her being strong at all? Her pack of werewolves is known as the primal. They gave up their humanity to live more like animals. What does that have to do what does any of what I just read have to do with Miss Finch's placement on this list and being a strong alpha? Nothing. You lost the argument already, sis. So, yeah, terrible placement. Terrible, terrible placement. Um, Peter. This I actually agree with. I would put Peter at number five or number four. Here's how I'd rank the top five strongest alphas. I'd put... Deucalion number one, Scott number two, Ethan and Aiden's merged form number three, uh, Peter number four, and Kali at number five. So yeah, this I actually agree with, although I would put Peter one spot higher. So she got this right. Um, number four, Laura Hale. I feel like if they went more into her backstory before Peter killed her and took her alpha status, um she would be a top five but we don't actually know if she was an evolved werewolf or not if she if she had the same power as her mom we just know she was an alpha um so yeah let's see what she let's see what they have uh laura hell is one of those characters we heard a lot about but we never actually got to see or meet since she died before the series even started however her death was heavily tied into the first season of the show and continued to come up during the entire run um no that's a lie because laura hell did not come up at all in season six part one or part two so you got that fact wrong i don't even think laura hell was talked about in season five or four 
I'm pretty sure. I don't think. She might have been mentioned one time in season four, but season five, I definitely don't remember anybody talking about her at all. So she got that fact wrong. Um, she was the oldest daughter of Alpha Talia Hale and eventually became the Alpha of the Hale Pack herself. She got that right. Um, she became the Alpha after her family was murdered in the Hellfire. She got that right. She and Derek went on the run for several years to escape the Argents. She got that right. She was eventually killed by Peter Hill, who wanted to have the Alpha for himself. She got that right. So, yeah, they literally have nothing here that makes that val validates her spot at being the fourth strongest alpha in the series. Um, I mean, she's clearly not that strong if Peter was able to kill her and he wasn't an alpha himself at the time. He was an Omega. So, I mean, yeah, if you job out to an Omega, you're pretty weak. So I wouldn't even put Laura Hell on this list at all. She'd probably be a top 15, but not top 10. Like, dog, what? Then at number three, they have Derek. I'm at a loss for words. I don't know why people hype up Alpha Derek so much. Because some of my subscribers do too, they'll be like, yo, Derek was tough as an alpha. No, he was not. No, he was not. This man got bodied by almost every single member of the alpha pack, probably minus Ethan and Aiden non-merged. Enos had the upper hand on him sometimes. Ethan and Aiden merged for him. Derek was terrified of. Kali destroyed and murked Derek in every fight they had in season three, part one. And Demon Wolf Deucalion isn't even a question. Derek can't hang with Demon Wolf Deucalion, even if he wanted to. At his fullest power, he wouldn't be able to do it. Um. So yeah, I would rank Derek probably number ten, right below Enos. If I was making a top ten werewolf list for alphas, anyway. So yeah, terrible placement. You're so stupid, especially because they have Derek over Deucalion. Yeah, nah, bro. You're dumb. Uh, number two, Talia Hale. Uh, I mean, I didn't really see her power. Um, I mean, she, people talked about her being powerful when she was an evolved alpha. She can turn into a wolf. But, I mean, that doesn't really necessarily pertain to physical strength so i mean we never really saw her any in any fights she never fought gerard nothing like that so i mean i guess if you want to say raw power you could hypothetically speculate that she's one of the strongest but she's talking about based off of feats in the show so yeah, and we haven't seen any feats from Talia, so we can't really put her in the top five other than just what characters say. But, I mean, Deucalion put her at high praise, so I mean, I guess that's a valid um, argument you could use for her being one of the strongest. And let's see what they have here. Talia is arguably the most powerful alpha that ever came out of the Hell family pack. Um, we don't actually know that. And I would actually argue that Peter is more powerful than her because of some of the stuff he was doing in season one. And plus his alpha form would probably murk her werewolf form because of just how huge and monstrous that form is. So yeah, I'd say the most powerful alpha out of all the Hells it's probably either her or Peter. Um, she was the mother of Laura, Derek, and Cora, and she had a rare ability to turn into a full wolf. Yes, she got that right. This was a gift she passed on to her son, Derek. That she got right, because Derek was eventually able to do that too. Um, Talia, Talia was extremely well respected by members of the supernatural community and by other alphas. Um, yeah, she got that right, but she was killed in the Hell House fire. Talia also acted as an advisor to the Alpha Pack that one Alpha Pack at one point in time. No, she did not. She acted as an advisor to the 
other alphas and their respective packs because the alpha pack didn't exist yet when talio was still alive the alpha pack actually didn't come until um deucalion lost his vision at the hands of um fuck gerard we see this in the show so i don't know how she got this wrong so that's a fact she got wrong even though she died before the series started her presence like laura's was felt throughout due to her power and legacy talia's was felt more than laura's laura was mainly a topic in season one and that's it nobody really talked about her like that after the first season and then talia she was talked about until freaking season four so yeah um i mean i guess and then number one they have scott no surprise a lot of people are like super hyper fanboys of scott and they like to put scott the number one of their list just because he's a true alpha and they say true alpha blah, 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 blah. but yeah scott gets his ass kicked in most of his fights and i mean yeah um i mean scott at the end of the series i would say is probably second most powerful besides deucalion um but yeah, for the most part, if we're talking about feats and ranking them based off of that, she, Scott's definitely number two. Definitely number two. Especially Scott later on in the series. Later on in the series, he holds his own more. He doesn't rely on other people to fight as much. He takes on fights by himself. Like, Scott took on Garrett Douglas by himself. Although he couldn't beat him, um, he took him on by himself. And he took on the Anukate by himself, which was also um, really cool to see. And he also took on the Beast by himself numerous times in Season 5 and survived every single encounter. Except the last one, which I always tell people, Scott would have died if Allison's memories never came. Because Sebastian was like 0.5 seconds close from killing him. So yeah, let's just see what they have for Scott and then we're going to call it a day. Scott McCall is obviously the heart and soul of Teen Wolf. From the beginning, his story is about him. He's been by Peter Hale and has to learn about becoming a werewolf and even to lead a pack. Eventually, he ascends to becoming an alpha, but Scott is a very special and rare alpha. He doesn't have to kill anyone to claim his status. This is all true. He's what's known as a true alpha to become an alpha by his own will and due to his virtue and will of strength and character. Uh, because of this, it has made him a target for other werewolves to envy his power. That's true. Scott has always managed to come out on top with the help of his pack. Uh, yeah, so um, that last sentence, especially the last part, with the help of his pack, that doesn't correlate to how strong he is individually as an alpha. Since he needs his pack to come and help him take care of most of the work for the most part throughout, this, throughout the show. Um, Scott individually as an alpha. He's strong, really strong actually, but not as strong as you think at least throughout his time as being an alpha on the show that we see at least until the very end but yeah um i'm i'm uh, you can knock him down to number two but overall this is a terrible list from screen rant a horrible 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 list i cannot believe they had the audacity to put deucalion at number seven man what a ter <laughs> what a terrible decision who this man Bro, Madison Lennon, she lost all credibility with the Teen Wolf community as soon as she put Deucalion at number seven. Like, dog, what? Are you retarded? You're actually dumb. But anyway, I'm tired of reading this list. I've already seen it twice. Twice is all I need to see. Um, comment down below how you would rank the alphas in Teen Wolf. In a logical way please that's not stupid um like this video if you liked me um going over this list from screen rant this terrible list also subscribe to the channel if you're new turn on post notifications blah 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 blah, blah. all that other good stuff that i always say in all my videos and yeah without further ado this is jade's corner make sure you guys have a, make sure you guys have a great rest of your day peace love and positivity as always and i'll catch you guys in the next one have a good day I fucking hate Screen Rant so much. What a terrible list.